Hi folks, hope you're all well and you've all recovered from the uh, Christmas Day festivities. Hope you haven't all eaten too much. I think I have. going to have to go back on the diet come the new year. Anyway, I've just got back from the Windermere Record Fair, picked up quite a pile. Uh, but prior to that, the other Saturday, we had the Kendall Record Fair as well. So I thought I'd uh, show everything I managed to pick up there. None of this I've yet listened to. It's awful. I must admit not been listening to much music this last week too busy with other things but that's all I bought <laughs> only one or two items it's got to be done so I'll start with the um, the Kendall record fair first and the first album I got was this album by Hank Wangford and the Lost Cowboys Save Me the Waltz this was a sealed copy, only a tenor. I first came across Hank Wangford when I was working down in London and I saw him in the North London pub uh, and he was superb. If you don't know him, he put, he, uh, Hank Wangford is not his real name, it's Dr. Sam Hutt. A gynecologist or some sort of uh, doctor, uh, but he plays country rock, uh, often tongue in cheek. Uh, with he's great fun to see live. I picked up a couple of albums at the time uh, with uh, great tracks like there's one called "Jogging with Jesus," which is superb. Anyway. Hadn't heard from him for of him, sorry, for years. Uh, so I was surprised to see this. This is a 1974 double. 1974. I'm I'm going to do lolly. A 2014 double album, um, which I'm really looking forward to giving a, a spin. He does a version of uh, the Beatles' Babies in Black. He does uh, the burrito Sin City, uh, accompanied by Billy Bragg. He also does uh, Woody Guthrie's Deportees, accompanied by uh, Bragg as well. Uh, Dolores Keane and Larry Love play on, uh, accompany him on a couple of other tracks. It's bound to be good fun. Uh, now on to some jazz, and the first one is this album by the Jazz Composers Orchestra. This was from, when is it, from 1968, this was recorded, comes from BBC Radio Merseyside, I'm not sure what how what this exactly is going to be, but you get obviously you get big names like Cecil Taylor, you get Don Cherry, Roswell Rudd, Pharaoh Sanders, Laddie Coriel, and Gato Barbieri. But the music's all composed by Michael Mantler, who I have a couple of albums by and really rate highly. So this could be very interesting. It's on the JCOA records label sticking with jazz we have ray russell's right rites and rituals i've got one album by uh, ray russell he's a jazz guitarist which is really good i think this is going to be in that sort of fusion vein as well never heard of this album before as well as uh, Ray Russell on guitar, you get uh, Tony Roberts on sax, Daryl Runswick on bass, Alan Rushton on drums, Harry Beckett on trumpet, and Nick Evans on trombone. So great lineup. 
expect this one to be a, a really good album. Somebody recently was showing an album by this guy. I can't remember who it was. Oh, I apologise. My memory's going. Well, this is my first album by Lowell Coxhill. This is Ear of the Beholder. This was, it's a double album. It was ticketed at only £7 because the, the cover's a bit knackered. It's been held together with sellotape in places. Um, Low Coxill, obviously, uh, one of the greats of British jazz. Uh, I'm not sure what this is going to be like because I know some of his music can be a bit free and out there. Um, but I've got a feeling this is covers all the bases. Um, he does a, a version of Don Alfonso with uh, um, that Mike Oldfield uh, did a version of. Um, I think Mike Oldfield plays on here, but whether he's on that track, I don't know. I think uh, Robert Wyatt's on here. Um, can't tell easily off these. Oh yeah, David Bedford plays on it. So it, this could be very intriguing, and it's on the uh, on John Peel's uh, Dandelion label. That lovely label that they have. Um, like I said, I was intrigued to get this. Couldn't turn it down for what amount of. A steel, seven pounds. Looks in good condition as well, apart from the cover. So that's the Lowell Coxhill. Moving from jazz to a bit of early prog. And we have Babe Ruth with first bass with a Roger Dean cover. This is their first album and uh, I think meant to be by far their best. Um, what I, it's a long time since I've heard this. What I remember was the vocals of uh, Juanita Hahn, who has very powerful vocals. Reminded reminds me of uh, Inga Rumpf of Frumpy, that sort. Great tracks on here like Wells Fargo and uh, The Mexican, which is superb. But they also do an excellent version of Frank Zappa's uh, King Kong. So... Good stuff. We now have the first album by the Heavy Metal Kids. The Heavy Metal Kids were the band that featured um, Gary Houghton on vocals, who I first came across, obviously, as probably as a lot of people did, um, on the television programme uh, Alvida Saint Pet. He did the, the two series of them, unfortunately, shortly died after the second series. Oh, yeah, I think I think just after the second series had finished, he uh, he passed away of an overdose. But they, they get, they're highly rated as a sort of, uh, what were they described as? A, a sort of distillation of uh, Slade, and who else? Oh, God. It's sort of that glam, heavy rock sort of style of, of uh, music. Uh, like I say, gets very good reviews. Looking forward to giving that a spin. Next up, two albums, I think, that are pretty much in the same vein. Um in that sort of uh, jazz rock, horn rock, as it was called, uh, style of music of Chicago and um, Blood, Sweat and Tears. We have The Electric Flag with their album A Long Time Coming. This is on CBS from... Where is it from? 1968. And they featured the excellent guitarist Michael Bloomfield. Uh, 
and also Buddy Miles on drums. And like I say, in a similar vein, we have the first album, I think, by Pacific Gas and the Electric. Uh, with a great guitar on here by Glenn Schwartz. Uh, this one I have managed to listen to, and it was excellent. Um, so if you like, again, that sort of Chicago blood sweat and tears style of music uh, I'd recommend this to check out that's the stuff I got in Kendall now we'll cover the <laughs> go through the rest of it which is all I picked up today uh, at Windermere now I think that because it was Christmas uh, there was a, a lot more in the cheap bins and uh, a lot of the other stuff was half price uh, all CDs were half price. Anything over two pound was half price, uh, and the CDs that were under the two pound or under were three for a fiver. So my mate picked up loads of CDs. <laughs> well, I went for the cheap vinyl. Anyway, first up we have John McLaughlin's first, I think, uh, solo album, Extrapolation. This is from, it's on Polydor, I remember what year it was, it, as always it doesn't tell me, <laughs> never mind, late 60s I would imagine, 68, 69, something like that, uh, on here he's supported by Brian Odgers, or Odgers on bass, Tony Oxley on drums, and the great John Sermon on baritone and soprano sax. This is meant to be a, an excellent album. We next, these are all from the cheap bin, uh, these first ones. And there was this Reading Festival which features highlights from the 1973 Reading Festival. Um, and it features on side one, you get Rory Gallagher, Strider, Greenslade and Status Quo. And on side two, The Faces, Andy Brown, Leslie Duncan and Tim Hardin. And I, I think everything is actually live rather than just studio tracks by bands who appear, appeared at the uh, studio at the festival uh, but what was interesting about this it came with this flower <laughs> god I can't speak today <laughs> this flyer uh, for GM records and it also had uh couple of the uh, ticket stubs for the weekend £4.40 for a weekend ticket god couldn't get anything for that now and I've just noticed now that on the back there it has the name Jeremy Spencer and a box 37 in London WC1A. Not the Jeremy Spencer, I wonder. <laughs> I love little things like that inside the albums. So with a lineup like that, it's got to be good. It's got to be interesting. It looks in great, Nick. Moving on to a bit of sort of pub rock. We have the Curse of Flyers with their album In the Great Artiste. People thought they were mama's boys until they broke loose. I think, is this their second album? Uh, I've got the first, I think, is it Chocks Away, which is excellent. Great pop rock, as I say, with Will Birch. Uh, so looking forward to giving this a spin. Looks in great, Nick, as well. As uh, quite a few of these do. A band I've got a couple of albums by is Mahogany Rush, 
uh, led by the excellent guitarist Frank Marino, um, often derided as a sort of a Hendrix copyist, but the two albums I've got are really good. His playing is superb, and yes, it is very much in the style of uh, of Hendrix. But this is on CBS, and it's from 1976. Next up, my first album or solo album by Leon Russell. It was Leon Russell and the Shelter People. Which is the title of the album as well as the act. I think this will be sort of gospel -y, blues. Um, he has he does a couple of Dylan tracks, The Hard Rain's Gonna Fall, and It Takes a Lot to Laugh, It Takes a Train to Cry. Uh, he also does a version of uh, George Harrison's Beware of Darkness. On here you get people like Don Preston on guitar and vocals, Carl Ruddle on bass, Kathy MacDonald on vocals, Jesse Davis on guitar, Jim Keltner on drums, Barry Beckett on organ, David Hood and Roger Hawkins on bass and drums. Didn't they go on to traffic? Uh, Chris Staten on guitar. Jim Price on organ. So great musicians. I think this should be a good one. Next, an artist I have, uh, well, three or four CDs by, but I've never picked up anything by him on, uh, on vinyl. And that's Graham Parker. So we get his first album, I think, Howling Wind which is from, oh, the, from 1976 on the Vertigo label. This one features the song uh, Don't Ask Me Questions, which I think is excellent. And I also managed to pick up his second album, which I think is meant to be a step down from the first, but still meant to be good. And this is Heat Treatment. And these are both... Graham Parker and the room, so you get Bob Andrews, Brinsley Swartz, uh, Stephen Goulding, Andrew Bodnar and Martin Belmont as the backing band. Like I say, I have always enjoyed his music, but this is the first time I've managed to pick up anything on vinyl. Probably their most famous album. That, this is the Edgar Winter Group with their album The Only Come Out at Night. This features uh, the guitarist Ronnie Montrose. And this is the album with the uh, their famous track Frankenstein on it, um, which is a great track. So hopefully that'll be good. And finally, from the uh, the cheapo bins, I managed to pick up this live album by uh, John Mayall, um, Moving On, which uh, features what was it, the um, I've just lost yeah Keith Hartley. <laughs> Mine's gone. Yeah, Keith Hartley on drums on this one. Um, the, this is the, the period when he, most of the music, musicians were American. Uh, an extend, extended uh, brass section with like Blue Mitchell on trumpet, uh, Freddie Jackson on baritone tenor, Charles Owens on tenor soprano, flute, Ernie Watts on uh, tenor, you get Larry Taylor on uh, bass, and uh, the excellent guitarist Freddie Robinson. The next lot were all half price ones, uh, and the first one I've been eyeing up there for ages and it was thought it was a bit expensive, but as it was half price, I had to go for it. 
And that's Nick's, Nick Jones's album, From the Devil to a Stranger. Nick Jones being a superb English uh, folk artist. Uh, highly, highly considered at the time. This is his 1978 album, just before Penguin's Egg. Penguin Eggs, which is uh, the only album of his which I think has been re-released. Sadly, after that album, he had a, a very, very serious car uh, accident, which left him unable to perform for many, many years. Um, but you n I never see any of his stuff around uh, his early albums. So I was really pleased to see to see this and at half price I had to pick it up. We then have Dixie Dregs with their album What If. This is on Capricorn from 1978. Now Dixie Dregs were a sort of uh, jazz fusion with a touch of uh, southern rock in them. Uh, they were the band uh, of Steve Morse, the guitarist, who went on to play with, obviously, with Deep Purple. Um, I have one other album by them. This, I think, is meant to be their best album, What If. And sticking with a bit of jazz, and then we have a British jazz rock trio, Backdoor, with their second album, Eighth Street Nights. Uh, I have the first album, which is excellent. And um, oh, going that way. <laughs> and they feature obviously the talents of uh, Colin Hodgkinson on bass guitar, uh, super bassist. And slightly less serious, we have the wonderful Monkeys with their third album, I think. Um, headquarters from 1967. Wonderful. I always loved the monkeys. Um, I want to try and get all of theirs. I think I have three. I've got the first two and the fourth, but I haven't got this. That one, I didn't have this until today. Uh, I think this was the first album on which they basically played everything apart from. French horn, cello, and a, an occasional bass by Chip Douglas. But they, the rest of the uh, instrumentation is all them. Um... And then we have the sort of progenitor to a band like the Runaways. This is Fanny, uh, all-female band. Uh, from the early 70s, this is on reprise, uh, Was came out in 1971. They were sort of a hard rock power pop sort of uh, band. Um, I think it, had, it featured the um, Millington sisters, uh, Jean Millington on bass and vocals and uh, June Millington on guitars and vocals along with Alistair Burr on drums and Nicky Barkley on piano and organ. Um, never owned anything by, on, on any format by Fanny, but I remember hearing a couple of tracks uh, a couple of years ago and thinking they were pretty good. So half price, couldn't turn it down. And finally, from the half price ones, we have a sealed album, and this is... South of Reality by the Claypool Lennon Delirium. They being obviously uh, Les Claypool of Primus fame, brilliant bassist. And sorry for the glare on this one. And obviously uh, Sean Lennon, who you'll all know. I've got the other, there's a, a sort of 12 inch EP and a, uh, another album by the, the Delirium, and they are superb. It's sort of that psych prog uh, with Claypool's madness mixed in there. 
this is on pink and purple, purple split coloured vinyl with blue splatter. So look forward to cracking the. Uh, I'll do it here now. Take this and see what the gate falls like inside. What do we have? <laughs> there we have the two men themselves. <laughs> you can always count on uh, Les Claypool to be a bit batty. <laughs> I think this is going to be excellent. It's a double album, though the side four sides are fairly uh, short between 9 and 13 14 minutes or something yeah so excellent and i've just got two more to show uh there was another vendor there uh for the first time i think she I can't rem i'm afraid her name has, eludes me at the moment but she's got a a, a shop in Grange over Sands, uh, which deals in vintage stuff and vinyl. Uh, so I picked up this from her, which is one I've wanted for a long time. And this is Early Steppenwolf, recorded live at the Matrix in San Francisco, May 1967. Um, this was actually recorded when they were known as the, the Sparrow or Sparrow, just Sparrow, I don't know. Um, rather than before they adopted the name uh, Steppenwolf. Uh, but they do a, a version of the pusher on here, which takes up the whole of side two. Um, so I like to say I've been wanting this one for quite a while. Hopefully the recording quality is good. And finally, one for Richard McCook, I think, in some ways, uh, with the lady that, was selling the albums there was a older gentleman and he turned out to be Paul Fenton now I don't know if that name means anything to you it wouldn't have at the time though I do know his work he was in the band Christie of Yellow River fame uh, but I would have I should have known him from the band Carmen, who did the uh, wonderful Fandangos in Space. He plays the drums. Um, but possibly one of his main uh, claims to fame he was that he was in T-Rex for a while and played with, obviously, with Bolin. And so they had this uh, uh, album, but, um, Bolin's Zip Gun, one of his uh, later ones, one about third from the last album that he did. Um, and Paul played drums on this, but only on one track. Uh, he played it on, on additional drums on Solid Baby, but still couldn't resist getting him to sign it for me. So Richard, can uh, negotiate... Uh, a decent three-figure sum for this if you're after it. Signed by one of the musicians. Never know. <laughs> now, I, I must admit, I've never heard this album. I don't I don't think it sold very well at the time and didn't get great uh, reviews. It's that period when he was going through more of a soul-tinged phase. Uh, but most of what uh, Mark Boland does is pretty good. I mean, you still got Mickey Finn on here on hand percussion and Steve Curry on bass, and Gloria Jones plays obviously on clav on cl plays clavinet and uh, provides vocals. So, all in all, a decent day was had, except for the weather. Coming back was horrendous. Winding roads through the lakes, half flooded, streams of rain pouring down from the. Uh, Fells onto the road. Didn't nearly make it back. <laughs> anyway, that might be my last. Oh, no, I think I, I'm hoping to do one more video before the end of the year. Um, but otherwise, 
I hope you're all having uh, a good week. Like I say, I hope you've all recovered after Christmas and you'll all be ready for the new year. Anyway, guys, take care. See you soon.